it's dark out here. <laughs> it's a cold day here too. So yeah. Oh, yeah. we had sixties. Uh huh. Oh wow, that's yeah. nice. That's really nice. So, yeah. Yeah, I keep thinking about how horrible it is that we just love it and it's killing us. <laughs> I know. I know. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Sense, but. Yeah, it's just so. like it's so not right, but it feels it's so nice <laughs> mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, we do what we can and we need to enjoy life because every moment yep. is so precious. So can't let it overpower, you know. The, yep. That duty yep. part can't overpower the, the beauty part, right? <laughs> yeah. I like that. That's very nice. Mm. Duty can't overpower beauty. That's good. Right. It's a nice phrase. Yeah, you know, isn't it true? I mean, to be in balance is, you know, I mean, when I'm focused on the river with the invasives and trying to get that all, it can be overwhelming until you just keep it balanced with the, the beauty of, you know, what's in front of you, you know, look at it. Yeah. Both. Yeah. Well, I think that's part of the secret too, is just really appreciating. Right. And valuing mm -hmm. the, the wonderfulness we do have, however it shows up, mm -hmm. um, because there's so much of it yeah. still. Yeah. <laughs> and there always is actually, sometimes you have to look a little harder than others, but, and sometimes it takes a little distance before you see it. Yeah, but it's no. always there. No yeah. With you. Mm. yeah, gratitude is such a fuel, isn't it? It's just yeah. a fuel for life, I think. Keeps yeah. you plugged in. It makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. It makes all the difference. Yeah. I was listening to a thing this morning about intent. Okay. And so just being intentful about wanting to notice and see and recognize the beauty around you mm -hmm. is a lifestyle mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right yeah I'm with you yeah it sometimes takes practice but it it's well, the intent the no wanting to see that instead of luxurating in the anger or the mm -hmm. frustration or yeah yeah yeah, I, I can still remember a workshop where somebody said, you know, um, you know, how do you love being angry? You know, or how do you love being frustrated? And and it's there. If you keep it up, there's mm -hmm. something about it that's appealing. Mm. You know, that feels like it's expressing part of you or whatever. And yeah. that's the hook that keeps you. So when you can see that, mm -hmm. you can like let it go. You can right. make choice then. You know, is that really what I want to immerse myself in? I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just, I keep going with energy flows where your attention goes. And if you're focused right. on the exactly. negative things, then it's just going to, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 You see that everywhere instead of seeing beauty everywhere. <laughs> yeah. 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 You have your choice. It's always there. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, Tell me a little bit about your journey in life. What got you from where you started to here? Oh, well, challenging childhood kept me outdoors and kept me <laughs> deeply connected with nature. And so I was blessed that way. Um, I was also blessed with learning flexibility when things weren't predictable in my childhood. So, um, I think that's one of the gifts I bring to the world is flexibility and spontaneity um, when needed. So um, that that was there. And uh, yeah, just the interconnectedness of everything was always there. But um, I think when um, my the vision happened at Bridget Center, um, and then I started moving forward with buying this um, former little chapel building on a hilltop in the countryside with a uh, field stone building with a little hand chiseled uh, school building to make it a peace, nourishment, and ecological harmony center. Um, and I'd like to share a little more about that, but it didn't come easy and it came before the world was ready. <laughs> it was like a high vision that 
came to me. I mean, a real physical, visceral vision on this property. And, um, and then I knew it was for its time. And I just had a, a lot guided and, and I'm allowing it to unfold for its time, but it's a very high rate vibrating vision of love for, um, you know, our interconnectedness. And I had seen it as kind of a religious retreat center, but it's more of a, um, ecological harmony education center. Um, so it's, it's all about really the ecology of us, right? I mean, we're part of ecology. So to start seeing all of ourselves, all of us as part of nature rather than there to, you know, overpower it or, yeah, or yeah. use it as resources for us, you know, that that's where a shift is happening, I think. And um, that is where we come alive and come awake, you know, so. That's hopefully what my vision is. And can I say more about that with Bridget? Well, but, you can, but I also want yeah. you to talk a little bit. I mean, because that certainly is a story in resilience. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hold them out. Hold them out. Look at this. 2009, uh, had it, the vision. 2012, yeah. we got the property. Um, and here we are, still without. Well, there's the heat. roof. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And it's heating, a, a stone building. Yeah. And wells. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, and you've done oh. what? You've got a, a herb garden and a business, I guess, out of there. Mm -hmm. So, yes. And the cemetery. Yes. Green burial, natural conservancy burial happening. But we are presently doing cremains and, um, just amazingly beautiful oh my goodness it's so heartwarming and um, so lots of things happening there so Bridget Center itself is like the mothership of a lot of projects happening where people gather at Bridget and then we bring it back out into the community so like we we have a big river project in town here that we're working on that really was inspired through Bridget Center and lots of volunteers and so what are you doing yeah well um you know, when people come out, depends on if it's groups or individuals, but I always, in, I throw wind chimes in the trees and then we're, we're taking out invasives or we're planting seeds or I'm teaching them how to meditate on the riverbank and just notice that, that uh, you know, everything in life passes. You know, when you look at the river, everything's always moving and how to be with that um, movement and letting go of things for, for something new to show up and um, it's quite beautiful to be near a river, so nourishing and spiritually, emotionally, physically. I mean, we are water. Earth is water. We've got to honor that water and be really interconnected with, um, you know, feel that interconnection and then things do flow, you know, <laughs> but it's taking time to pause, right? So yeah, and I want to introduce that. Ani, who's yeah. just joined us also, who has a great affiliation for water as well. So yeah. that was a nice segue. Hi, so. Ani. I listened to your podcast too. We have a lot in common. <laughs> Dude, my goodness. I yeah. love hearing what you're saying. Uh, Where is this super duper oasis? Oh, we are out in Kewaskum, Wisconsin. And so about an hour north of Milwaukee, southeastern Wisconsin, in a very beautiful, in the land of um, many tribes that were, were here, once here also. And um, it's, it's called the Kettle Moraine. So the, the earth is, has very kettly terrain from the glaciers coming through. And um, so a lot of big hills in our area. And um, we happen to be on a the project happens to be on a hilltop in the countryside. And um, so the vistas, as you know, um, when you are in a hilltop experience, the vistas are very healing, right? It's a part of healing to feel that you can observe rather than be in the story, but observe life. And so that's the beauty of Bridget. And yeah, thank you for I, saying that. I love I love what you're saying. I can feel it. I yeah. see it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bridgetcenter.org. Yep. Thank you. Here's some. Um,
Can I show you a couple of pictures here? Oh yeah. There's yeah, some, yeah. some women herbalists coming together to do a, an herb spiral that's through Linda Conroy's work with um, what Midwest Women's Herbal Conference. They're out there. I mean, we've got the, the labyrinths happening, grass on grass labyrinth. And so Bridges Gratitude Gardens are, the inner gardens are there to, for healing our bodies, you know, and having that interconnected relationship with the plants that are here, each one to help heal us. Are you true, med able? true medicine, right? Yes. Yeah. Are you, you you able to inhabit there and grow there all, all year long? What about the winter? No, winters we're already we're all, we've already shut our doors for the fall. That's it's um it's very seasonal yet the that for the project out there is very seasonal. Um, uh, but that know, works okay. <laughs> it's you know what you 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 work with it because you know out of every crisis something new is crying to be born. And here we have these beautiful buildings, and but they have no heat. We have no running water yet. Okay. <laughs> but we've been operating for how many years, right? And yeah, yeah. and it's still happening. So you know, you, you put can't let anything on get down. Yeah, it needed a new roof. It took several years to raise the money and make that happen. So she's just re-roofed a. Mm -hmm. That was. Two years ago, probably. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Forty-two thousand dollar roof, metal roof, yeah. white, cool <laughs> metal roof to work with the climate change. You know that's important. So, I'm so glad you're doing this. Mm, thanks. It takes so much. Yeah. Beyond the the normal. Mm. And you are that. You mm. have that. You see that. You feed that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. The the um the name Bridget. What well, it was St. Bridget's Church. It was a little mission church. Was and it? I I was like, Bridget, who is she? What is this about? You know, because I had this vision there. And I mean, and then I got this clear download that said, do not, you know, like stay with that spelling of Bridget when I really wanted to turn it into the you know, goddess energy with different spelling. There's 12 ways to spell Bridget. And I was thinking, well, it needs a little bit of a change. So, but no, I was like, stay with Bridget. And until one day it hit me, oh, Bridget, we're here to bridge sacred connection right now for personal and planetary transformation. That's what we're doing. That's but, why we're there. But and, isn't there and an, uh, a, a saint? Yes. Uh, so there's, yes. So let I, me see. With the saint, she lived in fifth century, um, Kildare, Ireland. She was a transformational leader for her time. Sure. She opened abbeys and monasteries for both men and women under one roof, spiritual learning centers, right? And um, out of that, if if you know the story of of the saint and the goddess, I mean, it's about it's about healing, creating space to let go of what's no longer needed then out of that it creates a void for something new to come through so then co-creativity is the second step so um she was a healer she was all about poetry poetry is simply expressing right poetry is not just written word but it's the art of co-creating right and then the third piece is she's the patron saint of um blacksmiths so when you think of blacksmiths it's about working with the fire within and this is where i'm really deeply touched um this is where my call is right now is to get super focused right on what our joy is what brings us the most joy and then to stay in that space of moving with what brings you joy and in service right but just like a just like a pilot 90% of a pilot's time is they've got this route. I know this well. You've got this vision of where you're going, but how to stay focused to let it unfold and make it happen. 90% of your time is spending, you know, distractions that redirect you back onto the path, right? So you're always redirecting back onto the path of being super focused as to why you're here. And um, that's what a blacksmith does. You work with that fire within because 
we all know we can be real reactive right now and choices that maybe we're in judgment of what other people are are doing if we're not living a regenerative if we're trying to live a regenerative life and others aren't you know we can be in real judgment um at times and and that's not the call it's just to be in our own staying true to our own walk and then letting that model it to others right um yeah. so stay in keeping your eye on the prize yeah that facial track yeah now, while you're navigating through 3d dimensionality yeah right <laughs> right yeah <laughs> it's, it's an art it is it's an absolute art mm -hmm. thank you oh i'm so glad to meet you no, same here ani so the the energy how how to work with energy is it's how to work with the unseen which is the feminine mm -hmm. the fem feminine divine expressing through all of us and um you know call it call it magic call it breaky call it whatever name you want to call it <laughs> call it inspiration call it wisdom coming from a source beyond us but how to listen to that you know how to listen to that and let that guide us is um that's the call, the right? That's the work. Yeah, that's the work, right? Mm -hmm. How has that manifested in your life? Where you've had to listen to that call in spite of yourself? Well, I used to be, I used to be on Ritalin for ADHD. I mean, you know, I couldn't get still with a thought <laughs> to save my life. And mm -hmm. And so to drop into a place, and it takes a lot of different practices, whatever, I'm not here to promote practices, but find the practice that works for you to get into a quiet space where you can feel the love of who you are, um, the love of source, creator, God moving through you. And then as you start to know that um it's it's becoming to me that it is it's my birthright that i've been created in love and i am a, an expression of divinity like no other like every every other one on the planet is if we believe in in our um true authentic expression and when we can stay in that place of self-love well then it just ripples out ripples out from the center of our being and um so manifesting manifesting has become very playful for me lately you know i've but i've gone through a lot lately too to to get to that place like um you know taking care of my mom and she suddenly regenerated <laughs> and after COVID decided she wanted to move into a, um, a care facility rather than me just taking care of her because she wanted socialization. And she, she says, be happy for me, I'm happy. And that, that happened about 10 days ago. Um, you know, I, she's 87. And I went through um, this moment of grief because I mean, I'm a death doula and I just always saw myself taking care of her till the end um, in, in her home. I just had the thought in my head that it would be in her home uh, where she was living and that I was the one that's supposed to, you know, maintain that ho home and, the, and everything else. But um, more and more, she needed more and more care and um, she, she wants square, three square meals a day and what? <laughs> so how do you falter on what you know i'm like okay well then that's what we're gonna do and now she's back social in socialization again and her mind is more alert again and you know she's like rebooted herself and this is after covid she had this realization like i don't want to be sitting alone at home anymore she had covid i got to be clear on that after she had covid in september she made this decision isn't that interesting? Yeah. So you just flow, right? My nickname is Flow, by the way. <laughs> so you yeah. just flow with what shows up in life. 
<laughs> it really is. Yeah. It really is. I, I drive a smart car and my license plate says my spiritual name, Flo, F-L-O. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps me yeah, I'm in that, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it, it's amazing how she has recovered and revitalized and She's freed amazing. you, freed you. Yeah, to right? Work. I, I'm so grateful. Oh, I'm so grateful. I, yeah. but like I said, I had, I had to go with, like everything, you know, you let go of a thought of how you think things should be and you do go into grief. It's not that easy to let go of how you think things should be. Or the beliefs that you have so you know I was going into grief like oh I failed her in some way or I failed me in some way for you know my doula work no I mean it's really clear that when she goes into transition I'll be right there with her I don't have to be bathing her or oh. feeding her right now so we have a different different mission a different exactly yeah <laughs> You've been freed up by the universe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And she knows it's a gift to me too. So good. Yeah. Yeah. And she, and she really does know that that it's a gift. I thought that was very sweet. Also was very yeah. astute of her. Yeah. Very she's nice. A brilliant woman. She's I sure yeah. yeah. She's brilliant. So. Yeah. So what do you do when you're not at Bridget center? Um, well, when are you not at Bridget Center? <laughs> oh, well, you know, I have children that are really invested in the world and I support oh. them. And um, so I'm a new crone in the world too, because my youngest is now in, in college. And so I'm getting into that crone energy of, of a wise woman, you know, <laughs> you don't have to play mommy anymore. <laughs> That's Good. been a gift. Um, but just like this morning, my phone rings, I'm, I'm involved with this big river project that Bridget Center founded in the village and my phone rings this morning now I didn't have this on my trajectory but you know you flow with what shows up and for over a year we we have a dam in town in the River Hill Park um, that's well you know um, it was created in love years ago to create a space for for the village children to swim right and then they put a dam in and now we're, you know, what are we 40, 50 years later? And I'm, I feel like I am the river often. Um, I, I, I embody it. And I, I just know that um, it needs to flow there, but I'm not pushing anything, any agenda to remove the dam. I'm just bringing up the questions for dialogue in the village about the function of that dam and why we have it because it really doesn't serve anything anymore and it blocks the fish flow you know and um so now we're on a dialogue rather than removing the dam right now our village is exploring putting in a fish pass so that the mm -hmm. fish can come upstream because i'm you know our little river project is a part of the milwaukee river which goes we're at the kind of at the top of the watershed and um, we, um, we need to keep our river healthy. We have fresh water here, the Great Lakes and everything. It's just amazing how blessed we are. So all of a sudden my phone rings this morning and it's, um, you know, like well, somebody from the village saying, let's get going on that, on that fish pass that you've been talking about, Peggy. You know, like our agendas are opening up for something new. And um, so, just like that, I'm on with Milwaukee Riverkeeper who writes the grants. They they have the grants that they know they want to get in to offer us. And so Monday night they're presenting. I've got the, you know, the, the emails going back and forth with the stuff for the packet for the village trustees. Um, I called the, the Boy Scout that I'm working with. It's the Eagle Scout candidate. Got him coming on the Monday, Monday night meeting to present with me with the Milwaukee Riverkeepers. You know, um, it's about relationship, right? And, and about putting your attention on the river and letting people know how sacred our river is and how to reverence it. It's constantly coming through me. So today, a lot of my day was spent, you know, looking at the grants that she's proposing so I can educate the village 
um, trustees and um, you know, having conversations with some of them today, um, plus the Boy Scout mom, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and so it's lovely because it all, it all flows. It's all, it's all going to happen in 22. I just know it. I just know it in my bones that yeah. this fish pass is going to happen. And right. we're also celebrating our 125th anniversary as a village. And wouldn't it be nice to, you know, bring in a drumming circle right on the edge of the water and do some water blessing songs. And we've done that in the past. Um, we did a river festival a few years ago and people appreciated that. And just like, it makes you pause, you know, we filled the, we filled the river with, well, Catherine was a part of that. She helped me from a distance. Um, but we had about a hundred canoes and kayaks get in the water that day. And then the, the drumming was happening and everybody came around the, the drumming and the drumming happened in a circle of cedar trees. I have goosebumps right now. Mm. And it's just so sacred. It was so sacred. What, what's the village called? It's called Kiwaskum. So it's after Chief Kiwaskum. Could you spell that? K E W A S K U M. And pronounce it again, please. He wa scum. <laughs> That's how I pronounce it. Wah scum. He wa scum, yeah. Mm -hmm. He, he wa scum, but there's no S. He, he wa. No, there is an S. K E W A S K U M. SK, not F. SK, okay. yeah. He, he was them. Really yeah. nice. Thank you. Yeah. And do you think your river work has anything to do with permaculture? Because I know you do a lot of permaculture stuff. I do a lot river. of permaculture. Absolutely. Yeah. It's about listening. Yeah. It's about listening to the land and the patterns. Um, you know, we're, we're planting thousands of native plants and native plant seeds as we're restoring 1700 feet along the riverbank. And we, we had to use permaculture principles. So if you're, for, I think permaculture.org or something like that, but we're, we're teach, we have permaculture teachers at Bridget Center. Um, our lead person for the green burial is um, a, an educator. He has books written. His name is Bryce Rudak um, in the, permaculture field. He lives in Milwaukee and he's been advising our project. So how we how we do the cremains into the ground is very, very important that you just don't put a bag of cremains down and then put a plant on it because cremains are very toxic, you know, um, um, a lot of salt, salt and something else in it. It could kill anything that you plant right on top. So you need to amend them with compost you know, um, in a nitrogen starter, like ground, like uh, coffee grounds or something and, you know, um, debris, brown dead leaves and debris from your garden, put it in a big five gallon bucket with the cremains <laughs> and then put them into the earth and then plant your berry bushes and nut trees and things on top. Um, this is the way to intentionally work with with it and then where where our green burial is on the land and how it flows with you know our green burial is intended to not be disturbed once we plant in there or place anyone in there so it, like the herbs are in the inner gardens of Bridget Center the green burial is the outer gardens of Bridget Center so it's very um beautiful um do, do, do you know anything about bios urn the bio yeah. urns, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's beautiful. It's another. I love the the creativity of, um, you know, like I think it was your podcast where you said we're just dirt and we're going back to the earth, you know. Um, I belong right. there. I make dirt. I love it. I, love, <laughs> I remember that on your podcast. But, you know, we, yeah, and we are. We our bodies are organic. We eat organic food. We're matter form when we return to the earth. What better way than to leave a legacy of love for future generations yeah. by giving our bodies naturally back to the earth? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. We hold, we withhold so much from the planet. We should not withhold our body. Right. I mean, that's just so ridiculous. Uh, I watched is. my father get buried in a mahogany casket in a cement thing. In, and it's just like, why? And it was so much money. And mm -hmm. I mean, there's just absolutely no point. And he's on a hill. So I suspect he's good. Well, the cement <laughs> thing will probably keep him there longer. You know. But mm -hmm. yeah, but there's a tendency to slide. So it's just, okay, what's, the, I just, I don't know. I just don't see the point. So do you, do you, do you understand how that all came to be? Just so we can appreciate um, the modern day, you know, we, two things, um, embalming started in the um, civil war when the mothers of grieving sons wanted their sons to be returned back home. Um, mm -hmm. And they, and a army doctor um, creatively decided to um, have the blood exit the body and inject ars arsenic in it for a preservative for the body. So the body could make it home to the grieving moms. So that's, that's part of the modern day movement um, embalming, right? Going back to that. Right. And then, and that's just a hundred years old. I mean, we didn't do that here. That's not part of our nature, but that, that fed a need at the time, right? Yep. The need is different now. But then the second thing is, um, you know, just the whole death literacy thing is, is huge. It's a huge piece that I'm bringing forward through death dual work is that we're afraid of dying, right? We, we all know that we're, we're just uncomfortable with it because we haven't had the, the, um, the dialogue. And in 2016, I had 14 deaths in one year. That's more than one a month, significant deaths, which really brought me strongly into this work. And a, a few months before that happened, I had a great a, a gray horned owl, like about three feet tall, sitting on my front yard in the middle of the day. And when I called the um, refuge to come and look at it, um, she said, he's got a virus and he'll probably be gone within the week. But he didn't look like he had a virus, but he came to me. And then following that, I had the, the 14 deaths in one year. And during that time, many of those deaths, I companioned through, um, we'll call it after death care in this realm, <laughs> but, um, you know, going to the yeah. funeral home, doing the planning. And there was one moment in one of the plans where the funeral director, and this is, you know, no, this is what they know, and this is their choice on what they promote, but they said for an extra $500, um, we can do a bead of caulk around the top of the concrete vault that they create to put the casket in so that nothing can get in, meaning no, no way that the organic matter can interconnect with the earth that it came from. All right. I mean, when I heard that, I had to leave the room. I was not, I was physically sick because I thought, and, and that was a sign, right? Your body has this wisdom that says, why, why are you feeling sick right now, Peggy? What's going on? Like, I didn't have it in my head why I was feeling sick, but something was making me sick that had me go back to it in my time of meditation and just hold myself and say, what's going on? And that's not natural to me. Yeah. That's not natural to me. And the, and the concrete vaults came about because when we're tending our big graveyards, um, and we're mowing the lawn and mowing the lawn and mowing the lawn, we don't want a bumpy road you know That's right they because sink. they sink right so you put these concrete vaults in so there is that's that's a counterintuitive thing when you when you live by permaculture principles the, yeah. why are we mowing it why are we doing any of that you know um so my passion is to offer a, another choice um with the natural burial i'm not saying that it's wrong with what anyone's doing. I'm just saying, I, I'm here to offer another choice and people can choose what, what they need and what they want, you know, based on um, their experiences, their, their values. And maybe by me modeling something different, it might create more ease for them. That's what I'm hoping, <laughs> you know, in the I mean, we say we love the earth so much. Why would we want to shut it out? 
at the end. It would be so much better to become part yeah. of what we claim to love so much. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, where, where are you in the <clears throat> de development <clears throat> of this passion, of this intention? Mm -hmm. Well, I wrote it all out um, in 2019, the green burial, the vision came through me. It's on paper. Um, I haven't had time to put all my attention back into that. Right now, we're look, looking to buy the, some of the land behind Bridget Center. We'd like to create an oak savanna is the energy that's showing up. Um, the oak trees are very powerful, very powerful, important trees on this planet for um, housing and feeding so much of our natural habitat that I really honor that. And the oak tree is a part of the Bridget legend and lore too. So um, intentionally I'm supposed to be doing this and creating this oak savanna. Um, I'm, I started following the green burial movement probably six years ago. And at the time there was only like 60 green burial. And now, now there's, I think, I think over 600 in the country. And now the Green Burial Council is the over is the overriding organization that guides this into being. And the people that are part of the Green Burial Council, you can Google it, are tremendous educators, passionate people about earth care. And oh, nice. I know some of the people on the board, and um, their commitment is quite quite amazing. Is that a website? Yes. Org, com? Yes. Probably dot org. Green Burial Council dot org. Or just do Green Burial Council. It'll come up. Yeah. 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 I got involved in Green Burials in 2005 when I had cancer and didn't know if I was going to survive it or not and, tried and started to look at what I wanted to have happen. Right. And at that time, it was like, oh, there were two or three people and there was a couple of videos on YouTube. That was it. <laughs> Yes, there was nothing at that mm -hmm. time. So it's just amazing how much it's grown. It really is. It's, it's and the fun of painting you know. your own casket, you can get a cardboard box that you can decorate yourself. Isn't that great? <laughs> that would be and fun. Let's just talk about that for a moment because I was at a doula conference in New York City and this little lady with a walker comes in. She's 90 years old and her name was Schutze. And she was a little German lady, I'm a little... um. Um, Jewish lady, <laughs> excuse me, and she came with her trifold presentation to talk to us about funerals, funerals, <laughs> because she said in New York, I know, in New York, there's so many Jewish people and their custom is to bury within three days, right? And she's just like, that's too quick to pull the family together that's scattered and all this, you know, these days. So she is, was promoting funerals, and I want to do this at Bridget, um, where, you know, you order the, the, the um, cardboard casket, whatever you want to call it, cardboard box, and then you have a party, and you have all kinds of arts and crafts, and people intentionally come and honor you. <laughs> I'm writing stuff and, on it. They're making pictures. Yes, and write their love notes, and write their poetry, and decorate it and art and then that's the box you get buried in i love that yeah and oh, gosh you know because how do you get a party together together after you die and it's so much easier to just um celebrate life while you're still here and and it's yeah, it's, and it's, it's actually cel it's celebrating the story yeah it's celebrating like it would be celebrating the story of peggy cober it's a story right it's it story. it's just a story it's a story for its time and it has a start and an end. My essence lives on beyond this lifetime, right? Right, exactly. But, but why not honor what it was? This lifetime. I, yes. This participation in the flow of life. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yes. Yes. I love that. Mm, feeling that. You're just sparking me with. <clears throat> Mm. <laughs> because I'm not involved in anything. Oh. I'm working my, I'm, I, 
I'm, I'm learning, <clears throat> I'm studying, I'm growing, I'm, I'm um, managing myself, yes. uh, my life. Mm -hmm. um, but I came out here from Midwest, from Indianapolis, Indiana, okay. to Santa Barbara. Yeah. And <clears throat> the Conscious Evolution Initiative. Yes, Barbara Marks Hubbard. Absolutely. I was an agent. I'm an agent of conscious evolution as well. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you're, you're the second uh, uh, entree of folks. Okay. Uh, I, I was in the first. Oh my at, gosh. At two, two, 2000. Yes. Yeah, we, we started it then, the, oh the gateway to conscious evolution. I got, to, I'm sure you knew her and I got to meet her as well. I got, I had a personal connection with her uh, alone in her hotel room once I was so honored to to be in the company of Barbara Marks Hubbard you know I was with her every day you were with I, her every day I made her chicken soup oh we, we would have dinner and 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 a little bit of wine and it was and I even lived with her for three days that's all I could stand <laughs> <laughs> I was throwing up <laughs> I yeah. couldn't because she she doesn't have much awareness of other people. Oh, it's she, well, her, her right her imagination. She, she was mission minded. Yes, mission minded mm -hmm. she was, and yes. she did a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. I, I love her, mm -hmm. and I did the m memorial. I put together the m memorial oh. for her, her here when yeah. she died April the tenth. Did she? Did she die? At age 90, was that right? 87 or 89. I, I'm, I forget which. 80, it might have been 89. I don't, I don't think so. But um, she was amazing. She, she just. So with just, that, let's, let's stay on that. Love. She taught me how to go into the chrysalis. How to put everything else out here and just to be in the chrysalis of what's emerging, right? Because I was holding a vision and I didn't know how to be with all this. And then I'm, you know, you're in this crisis and you feel like you're a ping pong ball <laughs> reacting to everything in life when you want to be focused on why you're here. And God bless her. I, I learned a lot. She, from was, she was 89 when she died. 89. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Where, when, when did you make your turn from rid Ridlin, uh, rid Ridlinized uh -huh. to being in the present moment unfolding? Right. Something really significant for me was being a student of of nonviolent communication through Marshall Rosenberg's work when I was a chaplain. It was mm -hmm. part of my education and it shifted. You know, you think you're going, you think you're learning this stuff to just learn communication skills, but it's really transformational work. Um, if you're a student of nonviolent communication. Um, so the center for, for nonviolentcommunication.org is where I, um, so I, I, just to learn how to, um, it shifted consciousness in me. It, you know, you first, you know, the pattern is you first start with yourself, noticing what's happening. You, you know, you first are all about the reactivity about something, but, you know, as you're writing it down or speaking it to somebody, you're noticing it, you're speaking the feelings, the emotions. And then you, and you sit in self-care and remember a time when maybe that feeling was met or that need was met and you can quiet the story there. And then you can shift into, well, I wonder what that other person was thinking, feeling, needing when, when they said this to me that created harm in me, you know, like what was their experience? And then you get into the consciousness of that other person and you realize, oh my gosh, you know, and, and then, I mean, I've integrated heart math into it as well, 
where you get quiet then at that point and you just say, and you breathe through your heart, you know, and you breathe in something that you appreciate and then you're just in this quiet place and you just ask, what do I need to know at this time now knowing both perspectives of something? And then something often divine comes through. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, and um, I did a lot of a lot of inner workshop work <laughs> with that process that really unloaded a lot of things that harmed that I felt were harmful in my life that no longer hold energy in me. And I really believe a lot of it was um, ancestral, like through my DNA um, that I released. So I don't feel that my children are <coughs> suffering from old patterns that may have been a part of. Bless your heart. Lineage, you know? Really great. I, I started a rekindling ancestral memory journey, eight month journey, October the 27th. I was bouncing off the wall for weeks. Mm. Just, just kind of coming back to, uh, you know, just to go back, you know, to go back to just coming, coming off of the walls to really go back. Mm. And as, but and it, I don't, <clears throat> I don't want this to be about me because it's you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I'll and talk a little bit more about the ancestor thing. I think people would be interested. Yeah. How do you understand that? How does that impact mm -hmm. your life? Because I know there've been several places where it's really. Well, I'm a, I'm a trained spiritual director. So I, I know to watch for patterns. Right, trained what in spiritual in, director yeah so, in what at catholic no no it, not necessarily because as a trained yeah. spiritual director you're you're trained to use the language of the person you're working with mm -hmm. yeah I, I just spirituality wondered. so um you know it was through a franciscan spirituality center in lacrosse wisconsin that i got my training okay but it's Thank not you. necessarily um you know franciscan is energy right <laughs> The Francis, St. Francis of Assisi. Yeah. Yes. yeah. But it's just about um, being present to what shows up and then not pushing it away anymore, staying with it. You know, like we've had some moments on this call even where we just let it come forward. Don't say, oh, I'll deal with that later. But, yeah. and yeah. that's not always easy because you can't always be present to everything in the moment. I'm sorry, but, you know, if you're in the middle of a, if you're in the middle of a meeting and somebody says something that reminds you of something your dad did to you once that wasn't a good thing or whatever, <laughs> you know, you've got to learn strategies like, like holding your hands, you know, under the table or holding yourself through it and then set, promising that you'll get to it later. And then that, and then the, in your evening prayer time, meditation time, just be with it and just let the emotions come through. No one, no longer pushing them back, but just let them come through. And how, how did you move you, through it? Well, what was your approach <clears throat> to your ancestral knowledge? That it was ancestral. Huh? Well, you do, you do some. Um, um, what would you call it? Um, soul recovery work sometimes. Uh, I don't know. This is um, <coughs> part of me. Right. That's it. You know, it's in the deeper um, layers of yourself that you can release. And it's also, um, there's so many, it's all about the unseen to release and to remember remember your, your what brings you joy and who you are on the, on the truest deepest level right so um so it's about uh self-awareness and did you do ancestral lineage um i'm not sure when you say ancestral lineage it might be a a, a way a strategy that's working for you that I'm not familiar with. I mean, it's working for me. 
Well, I did DNA. I did some, um, there's a lot of, uh, clearing your DNA was one thing that I did. Um, there's a book called that clearing your DNA or something like that. But, you know, there was a moment in my life where, um, my dad had heart disease. All my siblings had a heart issue all at, all within a couple months of each other. I have five, four, four siblings and my stepdad had a heart issue. And I, and I just made the request to bring something to me that helps clear this whole heart issue in my lineage. Like what's going on in the heart, right? And then um, I learned how to do that. Thank so, you. Yeah. When you, when you said remembering, what came to me was putting things back together remembering yes putting those members back i love it so so they fit yeah Mm -hmm. in the right place so when you write the word remember always write it re hyphen makes people pause with that word yeah right i i don't have any i don't have any information of my lineage Okay. But I've got a lot of energy. Okay. From my lineage. Mm-hmm. That I don't know what it is. Okay. Hmm. Mm-hmm. But you're but noticing beyond, it. Beyond this lifetime. <laughs> yes. Well, Ani, you're, you're taking time to notice. That's, that's 50% of it. You're yeah. noticing it. Yeah. yeah. And you don't have to, you don't have to react to it anymore. Once you've noticed it, you can learn how to be with it and i think sometimes Ask. naming those feelings yes allows them to to release you'd be the master at that one catherine with your story yeah right you know yeah focusing is a technique that that i come back to time and time again oh. um learning how to understand the nuances by which we frame our experiences. I mean, fear is not really much of a nuance, Mm -hmm. you know, but anxious about something is a little more nuanced. Okay. Or trembling about, these are all subtle differences, but they make a huge shift. When you hit the right phrase that fits that feeling, you'll know it Mm -hmm. and it will be gone Mm -hmm. because it's the blocking it that keeps us here and when you accept it by giving it its name then it it can release you don't have to keep that anymore um yeah yeah so what i'm hearing from you i know is that you don't have to name it you just have to be with it right yeah mm-hmm. well the naming really helps because there are so many layers so you can go through layers of that feeling no i meant like naming why it's there Oh, no, you don't need to know anything about to, why or, or anything else. No, so, no. So, Ani, that's the, that's the message right here, besides what yeah. Catherine just said, is you don't have to understand what this nope. is all about. You just need to be lovingly present, present to it. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. yeah. And resolve. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, it will. My naming. I've, I've yes. found a name. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah. I know what ultimate arbiter. Well, there are many names. There won't be one. You will find there are layers. Once you've named it, there'll be another one right behind it. And that's okay. Well, that that one, that one um mm. still working with that. Yeah. Still. Yeah. And and I know how to switch in a second. <laughs> I know how to center in my heart. Oh. And 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 let all of that go okay yeah um but it comes up you know not it's i managed fine but but i'm i'm calling it up i, I want it to come up i do mm. because there's so much more for me to blossom mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this is something other than that, but it's important. It's important. 
it's and what you're doing for you, what you do for you ripples out to all of us. So I thank you for your hard work. And what you're doing in Bridget Center <laughs> and mm. everywhere else you are. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. And I think the doula work is really wonderful. I mean, it's bringing us back home in a way that we really need to come back home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't hear your word, understand. Your, your what? Doula. Your doula work. End of life doula. Oh. End of life doula. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm I'm thinking that dying would just be an extended meditation. Mm. I don't know. But but in, in terms of consciousness. Life can be a meditation though. I'm life shocked. can be life can be a prayer. All of life can be a prayer, right? Sorry, I've got I think somebody's leaving a message. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I don't know if you. Yeah, but life can be a meditation if we if we stay in the observer, the witness. That's right. Right. That's right. So, yeah, and in the now. Of yeah. course. That it. That's it. That's living in present. I love it. I yeah. love your words. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. To yeah. staying in the mm -hmm. now moment is meditation. <laughs> And 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 let and letting it be, mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. it, just whatever comes out of me <laughs> is what you know. I mean, not whatever comes out of me. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. That, that's what I'm looking at. I love that. Yeah. Thank you. So Thank you. how? Peggy, how has your journey, um, how do you see that reflected in where you are now and where it looks like you might be going? Um, I just, I'm a part of a process and I'm, I'm part of many in this evolutionary auspicious time of change so you know i have my my mind on what i envision for the world but i don't know how much of it is you know it's it unfolds for its time so my job is to stay in the moment and and just be present to the possibility you know of, i know I, I more and more i'm seeing everything is both and, you know, and I'm seeing everything is beautifully divine and, um, and unfolding for its time. So I don't have the um, anxiety of, and disappointment of the world anymore. I just have the more of the gratitude coming through and still staying in duty and service. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, but it, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. Your, your future is the now moment unfolding. Yeah, it is unfolding. Yeah. And there's an yeah. interesting sort of, when you started talking, one of the things I wanted to say was perseverance and persistence, but it's more like dance mm. it because it doesn't have the push oh. or the rigidity of perseverance and how what that means yeah and yet the dance you stay with it you know wherever it goes oh, <laughs> so there's that. that's yeah, there cool. but it's not it's it's accepting it's flowing mm. it's, yeah. yeah yeah that push I, intuitively are you ladies feeling when there's the difference between push and flow like can you feel it in your body it's of course in in that yeah. instant <laughs> that you spoke it <laughs> yeah yeah because i when something feels like push i get like i get weird oh. i like yeah oh you know and I, I i live my partner is uh has strong masculine energy and he is 
an engineer and there's so much order in his life and and he's here to hold order you know with building codes and zoning and you know <laughs> structure. biblical scripture and um a lot of order right of and then there's me <laughs> <laughs> and i i am i truly know he's my medicine do you know what i mean by that like he's there to teach me to be okay with any nice like to love what is and he doesn't have to be like me and more and more i'm after 21 years i'm finally like going oh that's okay that he's like that i don't have to try to change him he doesn't have to try to change me you know there's a kind of balance there's a kind of balance there is and you know when it comes to like politics and things like that i am so neutral it's I love what is in, in all things. And I'm a part of all things. I just truly have that heart of oneness. And, you know, I live with somebody that has one, one perspective that aligns with one party. And I just, all I do is uh, stay in a place of let's be respectful of all sides and um, let's learn, you know, it's a learning process. So. And I want to thank you very, very, very much for sharing yourself with us. I really do. Thank you. Very what an honor. Yeah, very and sweet. Catherine, I just want to say thank you. And I know you said that in your interview. Um, thank you, Catherine, for having the passion of interconnectivity, the passion of working to connect us all in this new vibration of love on the planet in letting that unfold in this regenerative dialogue. And I'm, I'm grateful for you, Catherine and Ani. Thank well, you. I hope we see more of you. Yeah. I want to talk with you about that. So right. yes, very Thank good. You. I look forward, I look forward to connecting with you beyond this, some kind Thank of like, you. you're, you're in the network, right? Yes, so, I yeah. am. Yeah, we've talked yeah. already in the network. So I, I plan on plugging it in December now that I've got some things taken care of with my mom and things, you know, that Good. things, you know, the path is opening. So Ani, I look forward to connecting with both of you and the rest of the community more. Yes. yes Thank indeed. you. Thank you. Very Thank good. You. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you both. Mm -hmm.